minor housekeeping thing, just because fans ask a lot about this. Was a storm active ahead of Ethan Bonner because he had a better practice week last week? Yeah, I think Storm's done a lot of things throughout camp that you kind of get excited about. So it's not necessarily a, anything that Ethan hasn't done. We have the utmost faith in him to go out there and execute for us at a high level. Uh, the, the Storm kid, is, I think he's, he's played himself into that role. So that was something that was certainly earned. How would you assess how you guys played the second half on Sunday? I mean, you don't give up any points. You're usually pretty happy about that. Um, I'm just, I was excited just to see what we've been talking about since day one come to life, right? We're constantly preaching just like play the next play. Event plus response equals outcome, right? Control your response. And the guys just did just that. We didn't flinch regardless of what happened. I was, I was preaching them like it, every football game is a boxing match. It's not a UFC fight, right? It doesn't end after one takedown. So we took some punches early, got up off the mat, and threw a couple of our own. Unfortunately, you know, the game was long enough. We were able to come back and win it. Several questions about Jalen Phillips, but I think I'll just narrow it down to the end of the game with a sack and yeah. just kind of, I guess, take us through what that meant for him to be out there and make that big play and almost coming off of, you know, 10 months off an Achilles injury. Yeah. Pretty how, impressive. how incredible is that, right? I, I, there, there were times, like, when obviously when I was in the league, when you think about an Achilles injury, you're like, oh, man, like, uh, is he going to come back? Like, how long is this going to take? And for him to come back, look how he did, be as impactful as, as he was, like, just so incredibly impressed by him, the man he is. It's just his, his sheer fight. I saw it in his rehab, and then for him to come back out there and just have the production he did and play the way he did. He, I, I, I call him Mariano Rivera. Right? He, he's the closer for us, and then he did that in that game. How did Jalen and Jalen come away with their sack time uh, maybe going a little bit over what yeah. maybe the team projected, but now the quick turnaround also before there's Yeah, both of those guys, right? You can, you can have a plan and set a number, but if we know anything about him, we know the competitive spirit in both of those two players is second to none. So when that game was tight, particularly in the fourth, there was no chance they weren't going to be in the game. So um, obviously we're a better defense when both of those guys are out there. Uh, as they continue to, to play, you know, to get uh, rehab from injury and they start to feel better, obviously those snaps will increase, but just so excited about their role both as leaders and as players on this defense. Anthony, going back to what happened Sunday morning between mm -hmm. uh, police officers and Tyree, Calais, John Oof, what, what did you tell your players? What were those conversations like? And I guess what can you say to them yeah, in situations so, like that? Truthfully, the day of didn't quite know the severity of what had happened. I, in particular, was just very much locked in on the plan. Kind of got some whisperings through the locker room, but again, not, not really knowing exactly what had happened. So there weren't really a lot of discussions about it. Um, having now seen the video, obvious it's triggering for a number of reasons. But um, the one thing I do know is I, I know all parties involved on our end from my football family and just know who they are as men, right? And, and these, how my judgment and my feelings about them isn't formed through opinion, right? It's formed through experience and daily, like, interactions with them. So I have the utmost faith and in, in belief in who they are as people and as men. Um, it's an unfortunate incident. I know there's a lot of really good people in law enforcement. One of my best friends, uh, John Graves, works for the Cleveland Police Department. Like, he's one of them. So I think each of these cases has to be judged on a case by case basis. And I'm just gonna let the, you know, let the law take care of itself and let it play it, play it out. Could you have ever envisioned a scenario in which Calais Campbell is mm. in handcuffs? Not the man of the year. <laughs> Certainly not the man of the year. I'm actually surprised they had cuffs big enough for him. <laughs> so, um, yeah, not, not, in a, not in a million years what I've ever expected going into that game, uh, that scenario to occur. We heard Tyreek mention um, he heard the words of his uncle when everything was going on mm. to put your hands on the steering wheel, follow their directions, yeah. listen to what they say. I'm curious throughout your life, what conversations have you had with either elders mm -hmm. or people in your life about how to interact with police? Yeah, so my, my upbringing is, is unique, right? So I... You know, it's not something I need to talk a whole lot about. But, um, man, 
I'm going to say this. It's unfortunate in this day and time, right? When I had two boys and my, my wife is Mexican American. Okay. And both the times that they were born and they were light skinned, there was almost a, a sense of relief in that they were going to have to avoid some of the, let's say issues that, that I've had to deal with throughout my life. Um, so it's unfortunate in this day and time in the world that, that that still occurs. It's out there. I think the majority of people are good people. And, um, and shoot, I, mean, I was raised Christian, man. And I, I have faith in the, in the story because I know who the author is. So I have faith in, in this world and people in general. I like to give people the benefit of the doubt. And um, ultimately, I think good always prevails. Coach, if I can go back to the game, uh, tough transition, but the fourth down stop uh, at the start of the fourth quarter, I guess what I want to know is the way you kind of communicated your how pleased you were with the defense mm -hmm. in the film review because, you know, getting 11 guys on the wrong sides of the numbers to come back <laughs> to the other side of the field and make that stop I thought yeah. was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, so, man, that, that play in particular, there's two plays obviously from our side of the ball that, that stand out and to me just epitomize everything we've, we've talked about since day one. Right, we walk in day one, we talk about uncommon effort. I mean, that fourth down stop, you talk about 11 guys, like just a, a band of brothers coming together and just hunting and doing whatever it was gonna take to bring that ball carrier down. You, that was on full display right there. And then Javon's played by the goal line, right? We, we, we chart shots on goal. We talk about how important it is to take the ball away, not offensively them turning it over, taking it away. And he did just that. So. I am so incredibly proud of the guys. Like this game has been and always will be in the, in the in the words of Clarence Brooks about the players, and they made those words come to light. So I'm glad they bought into what they're preaching because we have all the talent in the world to get done what we need to get done, as long as we just you know take care of the steps along the journey. Take us back to January, February, whenever it was. Uh, how early in your time with Mike McDaniel did you discuss how to stop Josh Allen? <laughs> Man. Um, Knowing what this game means to this organization, um, there are some things that really didn't need to be said. <laughs> as soon as the schedule came out and you saw this game, particularly a Thursday night game, game two, it's when you kind of circle. So it's a short week. Thursday games aren't easy for anybody. But this one's going to be a little bit easier for our guys because of who our opponent is. Uh, it, will require, it won't require a lot of motivation from me. These guys will be jacked up to play and to show who we are in front of a nationally televised audience. Coach, speaking of uh, motivation and being jacked up, you still go into player mode when guys come off the sideline? <laughs> you, you get a little, you know. And how long does it take to come back down to get back? Yeah, so I try very hard to stay even keel, right? I, uh, I try to stay calm in the chaos. Now, when we got that fourth down stop, I did not, all right? I, I was yelling. Now, here, now, here's where I made the mistake. My headset was still on. So my coaches that were in the booth, like I'm pretty sure I blew their eardrums out with just, just my exuberance in, in that play. So, um, you know, this, as an ex-player, right, this is as close as you can ever get to it, right? And, there, and people ask, like, you know, why does so-and-so play so long? Like, why did Brett Favre play forever? Because there, there's no other avenue in life where you can get that feeling, right? If you're a basketball player, I can, I can go play basketball. I can go play tennis as, as I age. Like, I can play golf forever. I don't have 21 other friends where we can meet in a park and go play football. <laughs> like that ain't happening, particularly with 80,000 people cheering for you. So uh, now I live through these guys, right? I try to try to impart whatever wisdom and experience I have. And when they make plays, it's almost like watching your children make plays. Like I, I get that same feeling and joy out of it. So um, yeah, yeah, that excitement from when I was a player, it definitely comes through in those moments. John Holland, uh, you mentioned forcing that ball out. That had to be very rewarding as a coach because yeah. uh, the way he did that so instinctively, it's got to go back to something that you guys preach in, in practice. Yes, yes, certainly proud of that. But, but that kid deserves all the credit. He has been the leader by far in our chart of shots on goals. So we had something like 1,266 shots on goals, I believe, in training camp. He may have had like 1,100 of them, some of them while he was hurt on the sideline. So... Um, Man, I'm just, I'm so incredibly proud of that kid. He is a stud both on and off the field. And just uh, 
was excited to see him shine and be his brightest when the moment was there. What is the shots on goal? What exactly is that? Oh, so, we're, so we always talk about like when our offense or even any opponent, any opponent we played in the preseason or even in spring, as they were running by you, you had to take a shot at the ball. So a strip attempt. Now, now early on, like some, some of our guys, were getting, they're getting upset because we're punching them and we're hitting them in the cut. But they, once they understood the, the big picture of why we were doing it, there was no flinch in them either. So. I didn't understand something I saw on the internet. There was a kick that looked like it was windy and it landed. And what happened there with the ball? I thought it landed inside the twenty. One, the two of them landed inside the twenty. One landed way early, but you know Buffalo got one that you know landed inside the twenty. They had a hard time feeling it. They ended up tackling the guy at the four yard line. You know, you're, yeah. So you get that, and then they give up a big return. So you get you know both ends of the spectrum. They end up kicking one out of bounds, trying to put it in play. So. A lot of different things as opposed to just the, the same old. Like a roller coaster Sunday for Jason Sanders? Yeah, well, I, I don't know if I'd call it a roller coaster. Yeah, obviously, you know, when we, anytime we go out there, we're looking to, to make every kick, but, you know, it, it's like any highly trained professional, you know, you, you know, one hiccup, you don't, you, you don't blink. You know, whether you, you know, obviously in the summer, you get to watch some, some golf and you watch guys like Scotty Scheffler who, Gonna make, you know, three birdies in a row. He, he gets a double bogey, not even a blip on his radar. Not comparing player to player, athlete to athlete, but you know, when you're trained, for, you're gonna have some hiccups. You, you you can't think about it. You go back to your techniques, your fundamentals, get your get your head space correct, and and go back to work. So. Sorry, I'm good. What happened on that miss? Yeah, he missed it. You know, there's a there's a couple things that go into it. You know, but. Uh, you know, we, we, we can't, you know, we, we can't miss those. Like, that's not, it is 100% we need to have that kick. Uh, but you get off on a little bit of timing and rhythm and, uh, and don't hit the ball properly, that's what's going to happen. With it, it's mental toughness, as, you, as you've observed, being around him for a few years. Do you ever have to lift his spirits and say, move on to the next one? Or do you assume he does that himself without you offering him any encouragement after a miss? There's usually, we'll, we'll, you know, maybe it's just a look or a, a head nod, you know, that I'm not, I'm not blinking. Don't you blink. We, we got complete confidence. Let's go back to work on the next one. And, you know, as I said, you know, the fact that I see every single kick in practice and warm ups and, you know, if there's something that I see, you know, it's a one word thing of, you know, whether it's tempo, rhythm, whatever it may be, but he has a very good ability to self correct. As it relates to the touchback, are you like telling Mike before every single kickoff, we're going to do a touchback on this one? Is it like a conversation every time or no? It's, it's an ongoing thing. It's not every time. It's sort of, you know, we've sort of gone into the season with some, some things that we've talked about, scenario, time, scores. There's, there's several things that, uh, that we've already discussed before we get into those situations and, and into the game. Uh, but usually if he's close or if there's time, that, that there'll still be some communication. But, you know, we had several incidents in, on, on Sunday where there was no TV timeout and it was, you know, a quick turnaround and there wasn't time for those communications. But he's always aware either right before or even going into the game of what we're thinking. Do you think you can lull the opponent to sleep by, by going a touchback, touchback, touchback? Ah, we, we're going to trick you on this one. Does that ha happen? I, that's going to be an ongoing thing. And I, I think that as, as the season goes, you'll see, you know, similar looks that end up being different things. You'll, you're you're gonna, you got to change things up. I think, you know, we saw that a little bit with, with what we saw from Jacksonville and how they did some things with the kicker that going into the game was telling us one thing and ended up being something different. So I think that's going to be an ongoing process. I, I, Jake's been, he's had a very good camp, first of all. So th that didn't, you know, that wasn't surprising. He's, he's done a really good job uh, leading into it. You know, he's, he's had a good preseason. I think especially in those, you know, what we refer to as gray area and plus 50 balls, uh, you know, he's got a lot of confidence in the gunners first and foremost, you know, so that idea of being aggressive, uh, not that they had to make the play because he hit such good balls that they were able to, you know, go OB on their own, but having the confidence in those guys to make the play that uh, to be very aggressive. How good 
happens is have Saran Neal on your side in this game. And when you and Chris talked in February, March, had you guys identified him as one of the better special teams players in the league? Yeah, we, we you know, when when he was when he became available, it sort of changed the um, you know the the roster of available players and the rankings of of the guys that we you know you like, you love, you you know, really like to have. And you know, when he became available, obviously he went to you know very high on that list. It looked like Tyreek was back to return a punt at one point, but it was mostly Braxton. So mm -hmm. Is there going to be kind of like a rotation back there, or was there a specific circumstance that led you to put Tyreek? It'll be a constant, ongoing, you know, a lot of different scenarios. Could be the game, the situation, the scenario, you know, what's going on offensively, how the game is progressing. So there's a lot of factors that go into it. You know, we, we feel like we have several guys that are, are quality return guys. Um, I can't sit here and tell you, you know, here's exactly what's going to happen because it's, you know, it's ever evolving. But, you know, anybody that we put back there, just that like we talked about with, you know, Malik Washington, we talked about Braxton, you know, guys that can make good decisions, good ball security, and then, you know, obviously good players with the ball in their hands. What's your personal uh, perspective on the Tyreek Hill incident that occurred before the game and what you may or may not have seen relative to the, the video and the police um, interactions? Yeah, I, I haven't seen the, the video. Um, you know, my number one, I'm glad that everybody came out unharmed, you know, both our players first and foremost, but, you know, but also law enforcement, they have a, they, they have a hard job to do. Uh, so I, I haven't seen the video, you know, I just know that for the last several years, you know, the national football league, you know, we're all in this together, you know, the stop hate, you know, all these things that we are, you know, we're putting on the, on the jerseys, on the hats in the end zone. Uh, again, I think it's just another reminder of, you know, we still have such a long way to go. Danny, I wanted to ask you about the, uh, this feels like ancient history, but the punt return last year against the Bills, did that eat at you at all in the offseason? Did they kind of motivate you? What, and and do you, what did you learn from that experience? Well, I, I, it, it doesn't eat at me. Anytime there's a negative play, it, you know, it's always going to stay with you. You're going to remember the negative ones more than you remember the positive ones. Uh, it didn't fuel anything. You know, we had a situation where we, you know, we, you know, their guy made a good play. We had a couple guys run into one another. And sadly, the biggest thing that bothers me, we lost players. You know, we got a guy that's, you know, still unable to play because of an injury that, that occurred on that, that particular play. But, uh, you know, I give them credit. It was, it was a good play by the returner. He did something that, you know, that we, you know, hadn't seen a lot of him returning the ball from that deep. And he, he made a heck of a play. Good for them. You know, they get, they get paid too. But, you know, not a motivating thing. It's, you know, it's, it's another game. Their next game on the schedule. we got to find a way to win the game. Now, uh, Deontay Hardy is no longer there. What do you think of their new returner? And are there still some certain uh, systems in place that you have to watch out for on top of the return? Function? Yeah, you know, he's, he, he's a different guy, but he's a talented player. Did a good job for the Jets in the preseason. Was, was, did a good job in the first game, you know, making decisions and, and good ball security. He's a talented guy with the ball in his hands. And you, you go back and look at a lot of his college tape. Uh, they're going to they're gonna play the game, you know, without – getting too far deep in season, they're going to play the game a certain way. That's how Buffalo has played the game. It's been very successful for them. Um, they're a well-coached, very talented football team, and we, we got to be ready in all three phases to, to battle because, you know, they're coming in here for, with a purpose. We saw Raheem and Devon are nursing things. Do you expect to have them available Thursday? It's just short week, you know, is a process for everyone. So um, everything happens fast. So we're just working through with all the guys just, you know, each guy is going through a process on the turnaround, so we know it's going to be a full process for each guy as we get ready for Thursday. Yeah, how do you approach preparation when their status is in doubt and then you, know, you might have to leave more on than some of the other backs? Um, I think it kind of goes into the whole you know off-season program and the way we approach things. So that way we try and be versatile with all the guys and make sure that we can understand the ver like where they can fit you know with the roster and when we have any issues and guys got to step up in different roles and stuff like that. We have a good feeling of knowing what they can do. And, you know, that's the good thing about this, this, uh, this football team. We have a bunch of guys that are very willing to do whatever's necessary and have, uh, you know, complete skill sets. So, um, you know, whatever, whatever happens when we go to Thursday, we'll have a plan and be able to, you know, get ourselves in the best position for, uh, uh, competing on Thursday versus Buffalo. And what, what went into the decision to have Jalen Wright back in there? Um, more of it's just a, like whenever you get uh, healthy and active, it goes into what are the needs of the roster and where you need guys. And a lot of times it's special teams needs, 
defensive needs, you know, what what style of offense you're playing. So there's multiple variables that go into, um, you know, decisions or who inactive. But uh, he's done a great job. We're really excited about him. And, you know, uh, all of our players were really excited about these guys and how we're going to play, especially this week versus division rival in Buffalo. I think the stat for Jeff Wilson was no touches before the fourth quarter, then winds up leading the team in rushing. What gave you guys confidence to go to him in such a key spot down the stretch and to be paid off with the production that he gave you all in the fourth quarter? It's just the way he, Jeff's a consummate pro. Um, he's an energy guy, and you know, when his number's called, you know what he's going to bring physicality and um, intensity when he carries the ball. So we have complete confidence in all of our backs and really all of our guys. And, the way we were able to rally at the end to, you know, accomplish what we needed to get done was really a testament to the guys, and it's been, you know, awesome. We're really excited to continue in, upon that for this week. Right. Heard from a few players after Sunday that like uh, the common problem in the first half was just being slow, slow in the huddle, slow out of it, and didn't leave enough time pre-snap to break things down. I, I'm curious how much of this offense revolves around what you guys are able to do in those moments between breaking the huddle and snapping the ball? Um, a lot of it is just communication, because if you have different plays, have different variables, you know, that it, you have to consider whether it's a, a movement or a play within a play that you're trying to get to versus a look. You know, it's the challenge of when you play a, a defense that's a first year of their staff. And there's some variables that we as a staff, as coaches, we're trying to make sure we're getting beat, trying to not chase uncertainty, find the certainty in, inside of what they're trying to do, what their plan is. And some of that was, you know, reflective. But ultimately, you know, when you regroup and you get together and you're going, OK, here's what we need to do, uh, we were able to do that. And the guys really responded and they did it together. I mean, you just can't talk enough about our guys and how they really bond together as a team and realize what they need to do to perform. And I think that was really exemplified in the first half. Hey. Let's get together, let's fix what we need to fix, and now let's go play ball. You talked a lot, a lot, over the last six months about the offensive line. Uh, moment of truth on Sunday, how, how were they? Yeah, uh, listen, game one, there's always some things that you'd be like, yeah, but overall, I mean, we were able to do what we wanted to do. We know why certain things didn't go exactly the way uh, we anticipated, but, um, you know, the guys played hard. At the end, we're running the football like we're – getting into the, the, the rhythm of things. Because it's hard. Like, run blocking is, it's, there's a rhythm that comes into because there's different kinds of blocks that you have to execute. And then defense alignments change. And it's a, you know, it's a new staff. And that's, that really does, it's more than you think because you, you're watching an opponent that you're not going to play. You know, you're watching Atlanta for a lot of your prep. So then when you're getting into playing, right, um, you know, Jacksonville, and you're locking into how they're going to play, the alignments you saw on tape, maybe they're, hey, they, they tweaked their stuff that you didn't know, you know, which some of the alignments that we got were a little, a little different than we anticipated. But the guys were able to respond, and we were able to get in the rhythm. And ultimately, at the end, it's find a way to win. And we're, uh, we're able to do that. And that's a great thing. Played complimentary football at the end. We were able to control the ball and score when we needed. And the defense did a heck of a job in the second half. Backing off that, how was the communication between the guy, the players, and, and you guys, and the coaching staff with those adjustments as you kind of saw something that was maybe different what you saw on tape against a different opponent with what you got in the game? How was that communication about the adjustments you guys made eventually in the second half? Excellent, excellent. They're very, they're great communicators, and they're able to tell us what they're seeing, what they're feeling, right? Why things? Hey, why didn't you go here? Well, it's because of this. Hey, why'd you do that? Well, he moved at the last second, like. The guys have excellent communication skills, and that comes into the trust that you know you build with the uh, the guys over through all of their time here. And it's just it has to be an open communication because they're playing, and they have to tell us what they're seeing because you know our vantage point is different, and they can't come off the sideline uh, you know until the drive is done. So they have to problem solve in the moment. So when they come off and they're problem solving with us, a lot of the time they kind of know and they're making their adjustments. So uh, overall, I think that. Our guys and their communication was awesome, and that's something that really will you know, be important as we go through the season. Frank, what was your personal perspective on um, the Tyree Kill situation and, and what we saw in the, the video footage involving police? Yeah, I I didn't find out about it till later, and then um, you know 
it's a shame. I mean, it's just, it's a shame that it had to happen uh, that way. Um, it's, you know, it's just one of those as, as a person, as you know, you, when you spend all your time with these guys, you want to be there for them all the time to help, you know, like for me, like many guys, you wish you were there to help as well. How could you get things, but you couldn't be more proud for us. It's just the guys, how they banded together. I mean, uh, guys stopping to be there for each other, how every excuse possible to go into the game and not perform. And they were able to, uh, to compartmentalize and push forward and just the positive perspective our locker room has towards life and, you know, this, uh, this opportunity this season presents, it's just, it's awesome. And I'm, you know, you're, you know, you go through your career, you're just fortunate to be a part of when you get such special guys that really care about each other the way they do. Have you had a chance to talk to Tyreek since everything happened? What, what is that conversation? Just like? through the phone. Um, just being there to support and let them know that, you know, the great thing about football, I think it's lost on a lot of people, is that it's you bond together through your experience. And we spend more time with each other than we do our own families. And just to be able to support one another and be there and let them, let each other know, like, we're always there through thick or thin. And especially it's like one thing we pride ourselves on this organization is that the time we spend together, it doesn't end here. You know, there's a relationship for life. And, uh, you know, it's just something I know Mike, Chris, and everyone here that we really, you know, it's important to us is that it's not just we're here working. We're here to be a part of each other's lives to achieve the goals we want together and support each other through the good times and the bad. What did you Last notice two. about uh, Tyreek Hill's resolve, uh, the way he approached the game after experiencing that uh, pregame? You, you can't say enough about him. What a, what a stud. I mean, just to be able to have, I, I can't even, you know, you just can't even really put yourself there to go through that. You know, uh, I had teammates in college. I've, you know, a lot of your life you hear, you know, stories. But for him to be able to go through that, come out, and to be able to perform with his teammates, to band together, especially through the, it's not like the game was easy as well. So I mean, you can't say enough about Tyreek, and he's just a joy, and just, you know, it's fortunate to have him here. Your assessment of how Tua played on Sunday. Uh, he's it's it's really it's awesome it's really exciting for the season um he's in such a good place his communication what he's seeing why what he's doing it's awesome so very pleased with how he played and seeing the direction and we're really excited for thursday to see where we can build upon especially use the second half as our motivation going into buffalo